Right. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, so excited to be here today. I'm here with Colleen. Hello. Hi, Colleen. And we are so happy to have back Taylor Norris. Aloha. Hello, Taylor. So we've had Taylor on before. Um, she is a friend and colleague and Reiki master and wonderful astrologer. Um, and so we're just really excited to have her back to talk about the major things that we have going on um, coming up. It seems like it's been that for uh, a few years now, but I do think that these are some really um, beautiful and powerful aspects that we have coming up. And I know that she is going to be talking with us about those. Um, so she's Taylor Ann Norris. Um, MS has uh, is a UCW Holy Fire Three World Peace Karuna Reiki Master and professional member of the RMA, and empowers others with Reiki classes and sessions online, and is a certified Galactic Astrology Soul re Reading Reader. Sorry, Quantum Soul Guidance Practitioner, and integrates advanced Reiki techniques and intuition into her galactic astrology soul readings for clients' healing, guidance, and empowerment. And then questions that you ask yourself and clients that your work can help them to discover is, who am I? Why am I here? Where do I come from? And where am I going next? Um, and then helping to co-create heaven on earth and empower cosmic peace. And are you teaching um, online, Taylor? Or are you teaching in person uh, with Reiki? Online. online, everything online. Reading. That's what online, I figured, sessions. but I just wanted to make sure since you're in Hawaii, um, if people are looking, but everything's online. So you can reach her from across the globe. As always, we'll put her information in the description. It's taylornorrisreiki.com. Um, and then you're really active on your Instagram and your YouTube, which you can find Instagram is taylornorrisreiki. And I know because we're friends on Instagram, I know you link all your stuff to your YouTube videos and I know you've been featured on Galactic Astrology recently quite a bit. And so you always put your links to those things uh, there. So welcome. We're so excited to have you back. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be here. And it's funny because, um, you know, a little bit of behind the scenes, uh, we actually kind of switched around the order of uh, release so that we could have Taylor on here before the major eclipse um, that is, well, at least if you're listening in the United States, uh, not that it doesn't affect the world, it does, but um, that it's traveling across the United States on April 8th. Um, and so we have some big aspects coming up that we're going to be talking about. And Taylor's always so um helpful in these because she also talks about not just the aspects of it, but, you know, how you can use Reiki or your spiritual modalities and, you know, really go into the qualities of the different aspects and, you know, how they might be able to, how you might be able to use your tools to, um, to integrate with them in the different ways that they can affect each of us. So, um, yeah, really excited for that. And we, this will be released after, but we have the lunar eclipse um, in March 24th, 25th. Yep. And then the solar eclipse, April 8th. And then we're also going to be talking about the Jupiter Uranus conjunction on April 20th. So she does teach, find her classes, all of her stuff at Taylor Norris Reiki. But Taylor, welcome. And let's go ahead and get into it because astrology is a whole nother language we can all deep dive and totally geek out about it together um and so let's go ahead and and um get started with it yeah so i think well wherever you want to start but i know since we have the eclipse coming up it's on the libra aries axis it's a solar eclipse or aries libra axis solar eclipse so we're going to start there or wherever you want to start that sounds good. But before I start, I just want to say 
Thank you so much to both of you. And thank you to this community, to everyone who listens to the podcast. I am so grateful for all of you and all the connections and soul family I've made in this community. It's just with my Aquarius North Node really lights me up having this community. So I'm I'm super grateful to share this information and connect more deeply with ourselves, our multidimensional selves and our relationships to the to the earth and the stars and the cosmos and really embodying more of that. So yeah, I'm really gushing with with gratitude for this community and yeah, I feel so much love. So I I wanted to start and and definitely share that first. Aww. Thank you, Taylor. And you too. We've just, we love having you in our community and as a part of our community. And I want to say really quickly, if you haven't listened to the other episode with Taylor, go and listen to that because she tells just the best story about how she found the podcast. (laughs) Her origin story. I'm getting a Reiki lifestyle. (laughs) It's a good story. Oh, yes. Thank you, Taylor. We love having having you and getting to know you as well and all that you provide to our community, too. It's really invaluable. In fact, make sure you let people know about you have a Reiki share on the 8th, the day of the eclipse. So that would also be a great way for people to connect. So. Yeah, I find working with the new moons is very, very helpful with Reiki, with astrology and coming together. You know, it's a really good time to gather. And our next new moon is in Aries and it is the solar eclipse. So that's really the energy of a solar eclipse is like a big new moon, a giant, massive new moon, new beginnings moment. And we certainly have a big new beginning with this Aries solar eclipse. I mean, not only that, it's in the first sign of the zodiac, which has that energy of new beginnings, planting seeds, and really being bold and fearless and courageous, pioneering, stepping forward into the light and the fire of your soul and your passion and really letting go of anything that's blocking the flow of that life force energy. It's a total solar eclipse, so that makes it even more more potent, more powerful, definitely to come together and circle and be supported and and also really receive this this empowerment and this boost in energy and in our life force and in in understanding our sense of self at a deeper level, this is the essence of Aries energy. It's simple, it's direct, it's it's clear. It it asks, it doesn't even ask the question who I am, you know, or who am I? It just knows and expresses that that I amness. So yeah, it's it's really beautiful. It's this total solar eclipse is happening at 19 degrees Aries in 24 minutes. So that is where to look in your chart if you know how to do that and see where is the sign of Aries in your chart and where is 19 degrees in 24 minutes in your chart. And you can then understand what life area you're having and hosting and holding space for a new beginning in your life, in this cycle, and really for the next six months, it's a a new beginning for the next six month cycle, at least. Mm. I was sharing with Taylor before that uh, I actually am an Aries um, and I have a Libra moon, even though I know the the new moon is in, uh, obviously in Aries, um, and I will be turning 40 on the 15th. So it's also a new decade. So I'm, you know, all of us that are like, okay, where's that in my chart? I'm going to go look. I don't know it off the top of my head. I'll wait until the podcast is over, but (laughs) certainly looking at it. I mean, I know, obviously I have it in my uh, son, but yeah, that's really interesting. So lots of new beginnings in 
I mean, in a lot of different ways for everybody, but specifically in those uh, places. Yeah, and, and spiritual new beginnings too, because we can look at the ruler of the eclipse as the planet Mars. So each zodiac sign has a planetary ruler. And for the zodiac sign of Aries, that is Mars. And at the time of this eclipse, Mars will be in the sign of Pisces, which is all about our spiritual connection, our mysticism, emotions, and creativity being in the the divine flow. And with Mars, it's like unifying that that self-will with the divine will and really feeling that come together in your body, in your motivations, and you know, how you direct your life force energy. Mars is, you know, that that focused direction of the life force energy. In Pisces, it's like the life force energy is, you know, wants to go in every direction and every dimension all at once. And <laughs> and and Mars is like, no, we're going, you know, straight line, linear. <laughs> yeah. So to have those how two often together. Do you hear us talking about that where I'm all over and Robin's very, you know, she's much more logical. And I I actually, not to make it about me, but a little bit, um, because I have uh, Venus and Pisces at 19 degrees. So okay. that's a, like, okay. <laughs> Venus is exalted in Pisces. That's like, that's a very, very happy place for Venus to be. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, it's just inevitable that we're going to kind of relate it <laughs> to. It's like you said, up. Robin, you'll wait till after. It's like, no, I pulled my chart up already. <laughs> I know, totally. I'm like, where does, where's my Mars <laughs> <I'm> then? <working. laughs> Taylor yeah, so asked before, to be fully transparent, Taylor asked before what the, uh, what my rising is in as well, so which is Pisces. So. <laughs> funny totally which we all do so it's normal and then also it has to be about what everybody else that actually listens <laughs> that listens you know not just about me and Colleen <laughs> but I mean that's an invitation for everybody who does have their astrological chart you know you can pull it out and find those degree points and and see see what's going on because this eclipse it really there's a lot of energy in Pisces so any of your your Pisces placements will be feeling activated. And then there's a lot of planetary energy in the sign of Aries as well. So looking for which houses in your chart are occupied by the sign of Pisces and Aries will give you a, a clue of, of more of, of what this energy of the eclipse is about for you. Well, that's actually really helpful for those of you that are listening, as we're going to be talking about these aspects, that would be a good thing that they could do is, is go ahead and, and pull up their chart and look at any of the aspects that they might have within their own. And if you don't have it, and I know it can be a little, um, you know, you can, it can kind of be a little confusing to, to look at for the first time, but if you don't have it, you can find it at all different places. Um, you know, let's see what's kind of the, one of the more common ones is, astro.com right you can put in your birth chart and just free places that you can have that have that done and also taylor does individual sessions yes of course so and very good as sessions and very good yeah so so then we're in new beginnings and then at the same time we have this mars aspect of it in pisces and how how do those kind of, you know, flow to get, do they fight against each other or, you know, because like you said, Pisces and Aries and Mars are very different energies. Um, so do they, do they kind of fight against each other or is there a way to like kind of have that flow together? I think that's the, that is it right there, Robin. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, you know, I feel like this eclipse is very much about healing. It's also conjunct the asteroid Chiron, which is the the ultimate healer, teacher, mentor. So I think it's it's healing that part of ourselves that is 
conflicted, that is battling itself, that is resisting, you know, evolution, is resisting growth, is resisting peace and harmony and, you know, having having the heaven on earth, having these kinds of experiences, living in a, a realm of love, of abundance, of everyone having what they need and enough energy and, you know, working together for the highest good of all and really, you know, living that truth. So I think it it is, it's like dissolving and letting go of a lot of this, um, this fight energy and this light warrior energy too. Um, you know, this, this eclipse, I think it was in one of the classes with you all, it really clicked for me, this insight about one of the core messages of this Aries solar eclipse is really letting go of that light warrior kind of fight archetype, you know, and, and being more in that inner peace vibration, holding that for self, holding that for the collective and embodying more of the light bringer and the light bearer. And this is uh, very much also reflected by the galactic alignments when we looked at the the star alignments, actually. What star is planet Mars in Pisces aligned with? And when I explored that, Mars and Saturn will both be aligned with this star called Atronar in Eridanus constellation. And Eridanus constellation is the great starry river. It's a river of life within the stars. And, you know, absolutely beautiful energy, this river of life in the stars. And the star is at the mouth of the river, Atronar, and both Mars and Saturn conjunct conjunct each other and in a conjunct alignment with the star Atronar. So what I was really seeing with this eclipse is it's this new healing beginning, and it's also about the warrior Mars, the the young masculine warrior, the inner masculine, the divine masculine, receiving from Saturn this initiation, because Saturn is like the energy of the elder, the wise one, the authority figure, receiving from Saturn the the light bringer, the light bearer, that light within and and transitioning into this this different way of just shining the light and being the light in the darkness rather than fighting against the darkness. This is is part of I think the learning of this this eclipse and, and connected very much to this this Eridanus energy, this Atronar energy that reminds me a lot of the the elf beings and the Lord of the Rings and, you know, receiving the light of Arendelle, which is the light of their most beloved star of the elves and, and having this light to shine in, in the deep places of, of darkness and, you know, kind of putting, putting down the sword in the fight and instead just bringing the light. Yeah. That's really interesting because it is also a little counterintuitive with the idea of Mars and Aries, like what you might be feeling versus like you said, that conjunction with Saturn is such a great way to like, cause that was going to kind of be my next question of, so what are some, you know, ways, especially for those that are going to be experiencing it, you know, watching it, cause it does go across a, a good portion of the United States um, if, you know, what are some of the maybe tools or intentions or things that people can do to kind of go into it intentionally, not everybody is going to have the chance to, you know, be in the long period of Reiki or ceremony with anything. So are there any, you know, suggestions you have around that as well? But then, yeah, that counterintuitive piece of Mars but it's also in Pisces. So I feel like that's a really good sign for that. Like, I know you've been saying that, but I was just like clicking. <laughs> I like, go, oh, yeah, that makes sense of why it's there because it, it, you know, it's got that battle aspect to it. And Aries does as well. <laughs> Not that I'd know about that. 
Yeah, just theoretically, hypothetically. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Although my Pisces Libra calms it down a lot. So mm-hmm. <laughs> my mm-hmm. rise and my moon. But yeah, can you talk a little bit about that too? I think having the intention of peace is really, really helpful and powerful leading up to this eclipse and then on the day of the eclipse holding that frequency of peace and the intention for peace peace within and then peace on earth and peace within the cosmos within the within all of creation as well yeah finding a moment of peace of stillness and yeah even if it is just a moment just a few breaths you know coming into that that stillness and that peace that centeredness as well perfect for an eclipse in totality Mm -hmm. right yeah because when you're in it like it's a it's the energy because we we were in the totality and the one that went through Oregon in 2017 or something like that and when you're in that moment when it goes into totality and even if you're not in it that's okay but it it's like it's almost like snowfall like everything becomes so still and the birds stop and like it becomes dark and colder and then yeah you're in obviously the the fullness or the wholeness within that kind of circular idea that um that's that's a that moment of stillness even in the day if you can kind of you know go into those frequencies a little bit might be really helpful to be a part of that yeah, wholeness. That's another good word and good frequency. Wholeness, the the peace, the, the singularity of it too. When you were just, you know, like visualizing what it looks like, the the singularity, wholeness, centeredness that I think we can experience is is there as well. Yeah. So I I don't actually have um, any training with uh, eclipses, but what I've seen in some of my sessions, and not necessarily always <clears throat> uh, aligning with with eclipses um, in the literal sense, but where what it shows is that eclipsed energy. And, you know, prior to it, and it moves slowly across, and then suddenly it's it's completely there. And then when it moves off, it's like the the revealing of of the, you know, that inner sun, like really having people's inner sun. and i I often associate that with Mars that that's another aspect, like a solar plexus sun, personal sun shining through. So does that, does that relate? Is that similar to the teachings around it? I think that's a very good read on, on this one. It's almost like a, a rebirth, rebirth sense of self, sense of identity as it is with Mars and Aries and you know, this can be the rebirth of a country's identity, such as, you know, the United States of America. This is, you know, happening on, on global levels, like bigger, you know, scales. And then also that that personal sense of identity, too. And then, yeah, even knowing about the transits that are down the pipe, too, like a rebirth of what does it mean to be a human being at this time you know what does it mean to be on earth what does it mean to be a steward of the earth like really uh digging deeper into that and expressing that in a fresh way understanding that you know there's some changes some radical changes that need to be made and this really feels like the opportunity for a a new healing beginning and a, an invitation to take a moment to heal self, Aries. This is Chiron conjunct this um, this eclipse as well. Yeah. Same. 
isn't Chiron the wounded healer? Mm -hmm. So again, just what I think I know about it. Um, it's like the, the wound that you come in with, um, like the life wound that then is part of your healing path. If you follow your, follow a healing path. Exactly. Yeah. Chiron was rejected by his mother and by his parents. And so he had this abandonment wound coming in and was taken in by Apollo, the sun god, and Artemis and, and trained very extensively and, you know, like a like a protege, learning so many different modalities and skills and having so many different gifts and talents. And and then he became the person that everybody came to to learn from and and receive teachings and receive healing. And he later on received a secondary wound, which was his a physical wound to his leg, to his thigh or to his foot, depending on the story. So his initial wound was that abandonment and then a secondary wound later on in his journey was more of that physical wound. But I think, you know, just thinking about that for us, hum earth humans now, like this is a healing moment of that original kind of abandonment wound feeling abandoned by source or by the divine or by god or you know by our spirit guides or our et forefathers or however you want to you know i had to throw that in there however yeah, you want to look at it, it. Got a paradise. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah yeah so healing that and finding you know a renewed sense of uh belongingness and a sense of connection and understanding that we're we're not alone and we weren't abandoned and we can heal and we heal together we heal together and we heal loving ourselves as well deeply um, and expressing so, ourselves and as as we talk a lot about the belief in being separate from ourselves separate from god separate from source separate from the earth, separate from the animal kingdom, would you say that's right in that idea also? The, the wound of separation. Exactly. Oh. Interesting. Well, so it will be in the middle of eclipse season, right? When this is released, we'll have had the lunar eclipse, and then we'll have the solar eclipse, and then we have... A, th a third one i would imagine a another lunar eclipse no, no. just two eclipses this just season. two eclipses okay i was <laughs> i know i always thought they came in threes but i was like i haven't heard of the third one but okay so it's just the two yeah sometimes okay. three sometimes. this time it's just two okay <laughs> yeah all right well, would there be residuals from the lunar eclipse that's happening where we are recording this, of course, about 10 days before it's released and the lunar eclipse is in a couple of days? Is that is that like would people recognize some of the effects of the lunar eclipse by the time this is actually posted? Yeah, I would say so. Definitely, because the the lunar eclipse is bringing certain realities to light. It's like a, a big full moon. So this can be, you know, completions and new awarenesses, new understandings, particularly as regards relationships. This is Libra, you know, self and other being in right relationship. Also, you know, the desire for more peace, for harmony, for creativity and beauty in the Libra solar eclipse or the Libra lunar eclipse, Venus will be exalted in the sign of Pisces, actually in the placement where Mars and Saturn are for the Aries solar eclipse. So conjuncting that same star, we're getting that same frequency first in the lunar eclipse through Venus, our divine feminine kind of light light warrior alchemizing into more of the light bringer and and receiving more of this this light and this healing and this flow and this creative life force and then 
Yeah, so there, there's a real connection between the star and both of the eclipses. So I definitely think that anything that's coming up at the time of the, the lunar eclipse, you know, at the time of the release of this podcast, April 1st, especially as April 1st, Mercury will station retrograde. So there would be a, a nice point <laughs> to reflect. Like, okay, what just happened, you know, and integrate and actually having that Mercury retrograde for the Aries solar eclipse can, can help with that, that integration process. It can help make things slow down a little bit if, if things are feeling too fast. We have a lot of fast, uh, quick energies coming in April. So I'm really seeing the Mercury retrograde as something very supportive and, and helping us make more of those connections and awarenesses for like what's going on. <laughs> what's Mercury in? What's the retrograde in? Aries. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a time of mental transformation as well, most definitely, and, and shedding any kind of limiting beliefs about self, those stories of separation, thought forms, you know, paradigms of thinking that no longer serve the ways we are engaging in inner conflict and like beating ourselves up, like using that aggressive energy against self and then how that projects out into relationships as well. So yeah, there's a, a radical shedding and, and healing process of all of that as well, the mental body. Would you also say, I'm, and I'm just hearing this, that there would be a, a real um, maybe balancing with the divine feminine and the divine masculine energies. Because Absolutely. the divine feminine, that Libra, Moon, Venus, and... Pisces, Venus, with the, the masculine energies of Mars, Aries. Certainly. Yeah. I, so I have to say, because so here's where this all like what Colleen and I talk about, you know, all the time and, and you too, Taylor, I know that you talk about this is like, how does this all relate to our real life? And as we're having this conversation, I have Venus and Aries. And now you said, look for 19 degrees or 24 minutes. It's at 24 minutes. It's the only place in my chart that one of those two things is I don't have anything else in 19 degrees or anything else in 24 minutes. <laughs> so, so here's like where I'm like, okay, so I have this opportunity over these next few weeks to really, and I don't know enough about astrology. Like I have a pretty basic understanding of it and it's so it can be so in depth like you know you can study it for your whole life and still learn things you know so it's but here's like where we talk about so much like okay i have these kind of awarenesses that are coming up i've probably got a really big you know uh eclipses Mercury retrograde, Venus, all of it mixed in. And I, I have this awareness. I don't know necessarily enough. I can also go to somebody externally to like have, look at these aspects and how can I go through these as consciously. But we have these kind of situations all the time that these things come through and maybe it's not in astrology. Maybe it's in a different, completely different thing, a different experience or a life experience. And it's like, well, you know, what can we do about these and how can we actually move through these things consciously? How can I ask Reiki to come in and support, support me as Colleen said, like she's had those experiences with eclipses that then line up with the astrological concept of them. And can you ask Reiki to come in and help support you ask these questions or reveal your questions, reveal your intentions and you know, you have these tools to be able to help support you through these time frames. And I, in this situation, like, yeah, maybe I'll go in and look at this more. Maybe I should do that, <laughs> considering all of these things that I'm now finding out. Um, but if I don't, if I didn't have the ability to do that, or 
you know, the community to do that. I also know that I can just ask Reiki to come in and support me. And because it's an enlightened energy, going to know where to go and what to do. And like, this is so much of what we all talk about all the time of that lifestyle aspect of it, of just, just give myself Reiki, you know, like just ask it to support me. And it is helpful though, to know, like to have these intentions of what you were saying, Taylor. Um, But it is such a, you know, that's, that's the part of it. That's kind of really coming through in this moment of just, just ask Reiki to come in and support, like it knows what to do and where to go and what to do. It does. And it is. And, you know, what I, what I find in, in these kinds of conversations too, like people are, are led to the astrology like you at a time where so many things are going on. So that's typically when somebody is going to book a reading, <laughs> like natural, like you will be guided to book a reading then, or you will be guided to a class on a certain topic because there's something within you that's like you listening to you and your inner guidance to be led to explore something more. And yeah, Reiki is always helping. And what I'm realizing too, it's like the the planets and the stars and all these alignments, it's our, it's our cosmic curriculum. It's showing us too, if you know how to read them or, you know, you're asking, it can reflect to you reading the astrology, looking at what's happening, it can reflect to you what your questions are. You know, it can help you become more soul conscious, help you understand what your questions are and what what your journey is about and kind of where the collective energy is and the the dynamic between those two. But it is, it's like the planets and the stars, they are guides, they are helpers, they are just assisting us with our growth process and inviting Reiki to be a part of that or in, or the other way around. So you're already working with Reiki, inviting the planets and the stars to be a part of that is, is really all, that's what I'm so passionate about is um, you know, weaving the two together because I see how much they they really do dance and the astrology is is geared to help us with our awakening, with our healing, with our evolution and with our growth. So it's it's and it can clarify and make objective some of the things we're experiencing in our life. So we have a greater understanding of, Oh, like that's what's going on from like a higher level and it can feel a little less entrenched and personal and like, you know, why me or like why this? Like what it can really bring a lot of of clarity, I think, and objectivity and kind of taking away some of that um, you know, guilt, blame, shame confusion, like some of the lower frequencies uh, that can can be a part of, you know, anyone's healing path or spiritual path. Yeah. That's such a great point. I love that because it is really true. It does help to clarify. And I like exactly how you said it. It make it does make it feel a like less personal and also more personal all at the mm-hmm. same time, that multidimensional, but yeah, it does, it does take that, that part of it and it, it transmutes it. Maybe it's a good word to use about that, that aspect of it. Well, I think it also, for me, a lot of it in astrology, because I've been you know, working with it for years, although never becoming really fluent in it. My mom practiced astrology back in the 70s. So, you know, I've been around it, but I remember the the first time I really paid attention, like many, was during my Saturn return. And then after that, what I found so helpful with astrology was the understanding of the beginning, middle, and end of the cycles that it shows me. So I can know, okay, if I'm in 
you know, this particular energy, for instance, I just had my second Saturn return a couple, however many years ago, quite a few years ago now. But um, during that, now I had the awareness of this is a cycle. It's going to be a, a couple of years. It's going to have these energies. I can invite the higher frequencies of them. And what you've said earlier about the two eclipses, that I thought was interesting, and people may really be feeling this, is the completion and then the new beginning. And so people, what I've heard so many people talk about is how they're in that in-between right now or limbo state, or they may feel stuck or paused. So would you say this is going to generate movement through the completion and the new beginnings. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this is very much confirmed. I think you just summarized that very beautifully. We have the lunar eclipse as a completion. The solar eclipse is more that new beginning. And then the other transit, we're going to talk about the Jupiter Uranus conjunction and Taurus. That is absolutely getting unstuck. <laughs> like, oh, okay. and I mean, this is like the big unstuck. <laughs> like, well, let's move into that. <laughs> yeah. And, and for all of it, having Reiki energy to help you entrain to the higher frequencies, because, you know, when you're in that stuck place and you're waiting for the completion or you're waiting for the new beginning, it feels like, oh, when that happens, it's all going to be easy. But there's, you know, I always think of those new beginnings, like the seed beneath beneath the earth growing up and it's it's shooting up to the surface and all of a sudden there's a rock and now it has to go over to the side and shoot up to the surface on the side and then everything for it to bloom. So um, anyway, go ahead and go ahead and go where you're going with it. So Reiki on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so there's the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction occurring April 20th. So just a little while after this solar eclipse, towards the end of April, we have this conjunction that only occurs about every 13 years. So the last time we had this conjunction was in January of 2011. So it's a good kind of practice to think back, okay, what was going on in my life around January 2011? And these two planets were conjunct a couple times in 2010 as well. So kind of the second half of 2010, very beginning of 2011. Okay, what was going on? What kind of breakthrough process may have been occurring then? And that conjunction was in the sign of Pisces. So it was around 27 degrees Pisces, which I know, Colleen, I'm thinking that's one of your your degree point areas there. 26 degree Pisces sun. Yeah. And very definitely unstuck in ways I didn't know I was stuck. Yeah. So that that was the last time. We had this conjunction. I know in my life it was the same. It was like a radical uh, breaking through, breaking free kind of energy. And it was a lot for my nervous system to handle as well. So definitely inviting Reiki to be there and and help the grounding and help the the breakthroughs be as, you know, gentle and, and smooth and harmonious and you know, feeling really supported through that. But this is this is like a, a quantum leap, you know, wherever. So that another thing you can do is, is look in your chart for this particular conjunction, April 20th, where is 21 degrees of Taurus in your chart, 21 degrees and 48, 49 minutes of Taurus in your chart. And this will signify to you the life area where this big, break through this quantum leap. And many of us, I think, have been feeling like we're on the verge of some kind of like breakthrough and new paradigm, big shift in consciousness. And the energy's really been building up to that the last 13 years. So 
you know, being aware of where this might be occurring in your life by house placement can give you clues. But for, you know, the wider humanity context, this is occurring in the sign of Taurus. So this can be radical changes in how we relate to the earth, to our human bodies, you know, the ways we've become, you know, stuck and entrenched within certain belief systems and stories and ideas about ourselves as humanity, about the nature of the earth, about the nature of our values and abundance and scarcity and lack and these kinds of things, because this the sign of Taurus is ruled by Venus, which has to do with our values, with our money, our economic system, our relationships, our creativities. And Robin, you'll love this at the time of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. Venus will be at around 19 degrees of Aries, so you'll be having a <laughs> Venus return. It's very obvious why this conversation is happening today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So big, big breakthroughs in relationships and value systems and creativity and definitely the divine feminine, the earth, humanity, all of these are up for major upgrades and and finding a a deeper sense of self-worth and self-esteem and really being courageous and pioneering in our divine feminine self-expression, Venus and Aries, I think is one of the big opportunities here with this transit. So will Mercury still be retrograde during that time? Yes. Okay. Yes, Mercury yeah. will be retrograde and it will be conjunct the north node of the moon. So we could be having very groundbreaking ideas about our own, you know, personal evolutionary growth and then the soul growth and, you know, collective destiny. You know, what are we to do to be a more sustainable society? What are we to do to become you know, better equipped economically in a situation that's fair for everybody that's supporting everybody's highest good? How are we in right relationship with the earth? You know, taking that to an individual scale and then also to a, a larger collective scale as well. I think there's a lot of like reprogramming that can be happening and definitely a mental transformation. Mercury is linked to more the lower mind and Jupiter is more of the higher mind. So having them both in this conversation together, it's like the kind of day-to-day -day belief systems being, you know, like cleared out and, and shedding out to make space for like this larger paradigm, new paradigm, a, a more awakened paradigm. And even like, this is like radical new uh, belief systems mm -hmm. as well. Geared towards the future also with Uranus. We're gonna see a lot of, a lot of things. <laughs> well, and the sun moves into Taurus too, right? On the 19th or the 20th? forget the day. Yeah, the yeah. sun. So at the time of this conjunction will be at one degree and 23 minutes of Taurus. So yeah. yeah, it's a good day to ground, to be in nature and, and really connect with the earth and soothe the nervous system. I would say like really leading up to uh, this conjunction during eclipse season, it's always a good time for you know, more self reiki more like soothing of the nervous system, and then the same leading into this this conjunction. It's a similar kind of energy because things are only going to kind of pick up in pace, really. I just bought here. some ashwagandha. It's going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> some new <Perfect>. new kind. <laughs> ah, Adaptogenic <that's> herbs. <laughs> I was compelled. That's really funny. So a good time to also, if you are 
in planting season. We're getting close to that here in Oregon. It'll be a little early, but um, some things like that too, seeds and new beginnings and earthing and yeah. Definitely. I think new ways of, you know, working with the earth and gardening and growing food, these will be big themes for the next 13 years, certainly, and really taking care of your physical body during this time and and learning how to do that even better this next 13 year cycle. Because there's going to be lots of ideas about you know, what that looks like. I mean, there's already so many different ideas about what that looks like and what that means. I mean, even the question of, um, you know, what is, what is human? What is earth? Like all of these much deeper questions will definitely be, be present in a desire, I believe also for more of galactic contact galactic travel space travel exploration free energy you know gravity control quantum physics these breakthroughs in neuroscience understanding the brain understanding the technology of the body the intelligence of the heart the you know breakthroughs in terms of what the the human vehicle is really designed to do at you know DNA level genetic level understanding more about like what that so-called junk DNA really is you know and what it what it points to in terms of our human origins and more of our capacities as well as human beings things like the clear senses and these natural innate abilities that we have telepathy um, you know, precognition, the dreams, all of this remote viewing, astral travel, um, many of these gifts and talents, I think, are going to be unlocked at a even broader scale. I mean, another thing that's just coming in is, you know, this is like a like a mass awakening kind of an energy as well. Many more people waking up and being curious about their their spiritual path and what they can do and what's possible for humans to do. Uh, now this will sound maybe normal in our group, but um, <laughs> I just had, this is how you know you don't make this stuff up. I just worked with somebody this morning and the mycelium came in and said that it's speaking to us and those of us who are able need to really be listening to the mycelium and then I'm going to take it a step further so how we've been working with the 12 heavens of consciousness and it was showing how when we did the seventh heaven last year um I think it was that one, but this is related to this particular person and and how um, on the other side of this realm is, is like a, a space with no time and coming into this realm moves us into what they call the jello, <laughs> that we get through that jello slowly. You know, it's not on the other side, it's just an instantaneous on this side, we move through time, but it was saying the membrane between there and here is the connection with the mycelium and the earth, that they're the same frequencies, but the mycelium is the um, physical manifestation of that membrane. And, and then that's what it, and, you know, the whole session was about the, this person and how the, the energy of the mycelium was going to physically help their body and really make a difference for that groundedness that you're talking about. And then it popped in and said, and by the way, Colleen, you too. So... <laughs> Well, Colleen, one of the the supplements that you just started 
is one of the, there's not a lot of mushroom supplements that also include the mycelium. So the, uh, you just started includes the mycelium aspects within the supplements. So which one is that? Uh, you started the lion's mane. Yeah. So yeah, as far as I know, I'm not an expert in that. I, I should qualify that. But as far as I was told by our Chinese medicine doctor, that was why he recommends that one. Yeah. Anyways, that's really fascinating. And speaking of nervous systems and mycelium and neurons and, you know, neural network in our own brain, like, yeah, really interesting. So I don't know. I don't know where to go from there with that, Taylor. I, but I think you know. that is like so on point. It's like the physicalization of that, that interconnectivity that level of interconnectivity i think is a is a beautiful manifestation you know being more aware of that within our bodies and our connection and our auric field and and how we are a part of that that network as well absolutely and the jello talk reminds me a lot about uh lemurian times and earlier earlier from a linear time perspective times upon the earth where you know human beings may have been more in that that jello type form and you know not quite as as dense as we are all now so how beautiful to experience that within the heavens and and yeah what that might mean for the next 13 year cycle you know be becoming more entrained with that more that divine feminine consciousness that was a part of the Lemurian times and when we were less dense and more in that that awareness of our connection to source and our you know to God the divine and to the divine and each of ourselves much more in that awareness of like the group consciousness within human beings on earth and then with the earth as well that not being like separate i think yeah we're that's totally connected and and totally a great way of looking at this this transit and it's heaven on earth it's like bringing the 12 heavens you know that you guys study and that we or that y'all teach and we all study and practice together and training you know, ourselves to those heavens of consciousness and bringing more of that frequency into embodiment and into the mainstream and into as many forms as we can possibly create within the earth, bringing it into the physical more and more is is also, yeah, Jupiter, Uranus, conjunct in Taurus. So much just it's just fascinating. It's so interesting how it all comes together. And and I think one of the other things would be um, with the divine feminine, just receiving at this time, you know, letting the energy lifting to these and training to the higher frequencies and receiving them because it, it I, I think of Uranus often as, it's going to reveal a lot of the unknown. And so we can't, I feel like it's not a time that we can, you know, necessarily strategize to make sure, you know, if I do this and this and this and this and this, then this will be the outcome. It seems like it has to be, we have to be just more receptive. That's a relief. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> can I not have to do it before? So I'm, I'm happy to do it, but it can be also like, oh gosh, I hope I say the, you know, right intentions. But if I can just drop into the receiving and release the control and drop into that receiving aspect, that is a really great point um, for it all. That it's like, it's okay, you know, <laughs> breathe. Yeah. Yeah, breathe and receive, and it is. It's like expect the unexpected. Uranus is the unexpected, the sudden, disruptive moment of awakening. 
and Jupiter expands everything it touches. So this is like big, unexpected, big awakening, big, sudden kind of thing that, you know, you even the kind of unexpected thing you think it might be is probably not even going to be that. <laughs> So it's, it is, it's a total surrender and just be and Reiki on and be present and be open for the ride. You know, Jupiter is ready to have a, a good time and Uranus is like, you know, blast off, take off, let's go into the future. It sounds fun and a little bit like I'm a little nervous too. <laughs> well, I actually have a great story about that because a couple of years ago, um, I had a, a, an astrology reading and, and there was an eclipse and I think it was, I think it was in Libra. Um, if I remember correctly, no, it wouldn't have been in, in Libra <clears throat> anyway. Um, so, and there was an eclipse and I was telling Taylor before we started the recording that I actually can be really affected by eclipses. I, I've had some pretty, uh, pretty big experiences that have related to my physical health and, uh, eclipse energy. And so I had had this astrology reading because I knew there was an eclipse coming up and I was like, you know, I would like to know how this is going to fit into my chart into the different aspects and at the time she had said you know this energy is expect the unexpected with it all and it also related to pluto and having a really big pluto transit that had happened the year before that was as pluto transits can be uh dark night of the soul stuff i had been through a lot of health problems and I, um, then it was after the summer and I had had multiple seizures that summer, but one of the things that had happened before was that I had already made plans to go to Disneyland before all of my, I was finally getting better from my years of health problems with long COVID. And, um, so we are like, okay, by October, November, I'm going to be continuing on this path and I'll be feeling capable of doing this because I had not been capable of of doing that for years as I was pretty debilitated by it and but we had already made the plans we had bought the tickets the whole thing and then I had seizures that summer and so we're like am I going to be able to do this am I going to be able to go and I got the green light to go by the neurologist. But the first day of our trip was on the eclipse. And I had had that reading of expect the unexpected. And so I'm just sending so much Reiki into it. And the other uh, thing with it was that this is also going to be a preview of this next year and the transition of Pluto and the eclipses that are coming and how they uh, fit into your chart. I have uh, Pluto and Scorpio in my eighth house, by the way. <laughs> so super fun. Conjunct Saturn, right? What? And I conjunct Saturn. Yeah. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. Um, at zero degrees, my Pluto's at zero degrees. So anyway, side note. Um, and so I was like, okay, so I'm just sending Reiki into this. This is a pretty big ri risk, you know, ish. And, but the neurologist said, you should be fine. Just take breaks when you can. And, um, you know, maybe don't go on space mountain. So I didn't do space mountain, but anyway, so this, this idea of this expect the unexpected was really kind of, I was really trying to surrender to that. But when you had gone, when I had gone through all of these things and it had been multiple years, I'm not going to lie that there was fear involved with what that meant. What does that mean for me? And then we just had so much fun. It was this bright spot at the end of this long, dark tunnel that we had all gone through because my husband was in caregiving for me and, you know, our daughter and we were with some friends that we had decided to take the trip with. And um, we just, I mean, it was just this like rebirthing into the light. 
And I had, I was trying to go into the positive of that, expect the unexpected with it. Um, and at the same time, it was a challenging piece of the puzzle uh, for me. Uh, and it, so I was like, all right, I'm leaving room for it. I'm leaving room for it. It's going to, mm-hmm. you know, but then it really was. And it was such, it was the level of fun that it was my, how I was capable, even though I had to take breaks and all of that thing, uh, all of that kind of thing too, um, was, was really unexpected for all of us. And I really was a level of, of like, we were still kind of in that place of holding our breath of like, when's the other shoe going to drop with all of this? Am I going to be able to do this? And that was the unexpected. And then going into the next year in each of the different aspects that I had been, you know, like, look at this one, look at this one, because this is a preview of how it's going to be. We had, it was, we had, there was the fun on each of those aspects. And um, also the idea that, well, this next transition of Pluto is going to be a different, different Pluto for you. um, These next 20 years, as far as that's, that part is concerned. And, and so I, it just gave me a different perspective of when you're talking about expect the unexpected, all of the infinite possibilities that that could mean. And I know Taylor, as an astrologer, you probably already know that, but as you know, the, the, those of us that don't know it all of that, all that well, it was, um, it was another level of understanding and another learning around what those kinds of ideas can mean when it comes to astrology, even though this astrologer didn't paint it as this shadow, you know, that I know sometimes can happen. She didn't paint it as that way. Um, But I just didn't, I didn't realize that it could be that, that too, that that could be the unexpected. You expect it to be this big, like, Oh, what, what could it be? (laughs) And it was like, Oh no, it's, it's fun, which was really needed because of our, our journey that we had kind of been on for the last few years for all of us. That's super helpful to hear. Cause I know people can hear that expect the unexpected and then like brace, you know, like tense (laughs) everything up, like shoulders to the ears and you know, yeah, I love that like real life story of of how it turned out well for you. And yeah, we've been doing a lot too of this, you know, the transits through us reflecting this process of reconditioning and reprogramming the subconscious and like, you know, what's laying below the surface of conscious awareness, a lot of this work happening you know, in journeys or in dream time or, you know, just really deep processes of, you know, letting go of of fears and reprogramming in those beliefs like, you know, expecting miracles or what if something wonderful happens or everything's always working out for me and like these different ideas instead of always just, you know, those neuro pathways so focused on like the worst case scenario or, you know, any kind of uncertainty or unknown triggering that that fear response. So, yeah, absolutely. I think be, o- be open to positive results with with this conjunction and, you know, relax into the, the possibilities that are here because it's really an energy of infinite possibilities. And Uranus also innovation, like absolutely pretty big innovation. So, and you were talking about that new breakthroughs. Um, so I think that word is also, you know, in alignment with Uranus from the way you were describing it, that breakthrough energy can be that place of like, oh, at last we have these answers, or maybe at last we have the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, freedom and liberation and yeah, letting go into that, that innovation solutions, possibilities, like a solutions kind of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah, resourcefulness. Mm -hmm. 
in Taurus especially, resourcefulness. Um, practical, I, super practical. <laughs> We're laughing because we always talk about it's. it has to come into the practical world. And, you know, if if we were in a place where we weren't living in the practical world, then we could, you know, do all of this just philosophically or spiritually, but we live practical lives. So it, it has to apply. So describe a little bit more about that Taurus energy, too, because I do think that's really an important understanding of, of that Taurus, you know, really grounded earth energy it's fixed so the modality is fixed and the element is earth so it is the most stable sign of the zodiac it's the one that's most resistant to change and breakthroughs you know the most stubborn sign so to have this conjunction in Taurus it's like the deepest places we've been stuck and maybe like overly materialistic even um there will be a, a breakthrough in the ways we've been the most stuck the most stagnant the most kind of in a rut and opening to that next level of innovation and you know, living life on earth in a way that is caught up with the the science and the technology and and also, you know, I'm I'm thinking about all the different breakthroughs different scientists have made that like just haven't yet been offered to the mainstream, like solutions to all these big problems that we have the solution, but it hasn't yet been able to like go into like the flow of being accessible to everybody and like being the new norm for how we get around you know these different problems so i'm i'm really seeing this as you know stabilizing into this this new future of humanity and being in a greater sense of harmony with the earth and how this can look personally too is just whatever part of your life you've been feeling like you're in some kind of rut is to you know break out of that and and allow yourself to be unstable for a little bit you know to be a little unsteady and if that happens know that that's okay and that's where you know this is like allow yourself to be shaken up a little bit gently you know and and the things everything can kind of like rearrange itself in a in a higher order ultimately mm -hmm. yeah so then in because you study so much of the galactic realms can you talk about how that's all maybe coinciding or influencing yeah so with this particular conjunction, there's an alignment to Beta Centauri star, also known as Hadar, also known as Aegina. It has like three different names <laughs> within Centaurus constellation. And this is what I've been feeling in the Reiki journeys with it is like a, a divine feminine utopia kind of a world planetary system star system and you know having kind of that more lemurian frequency what you were describing colleen with like the jello realms and the fluidity and the mycelium and like being really really in that that connectivity so we're having that kind of influx of galactic support through this alignment and then also the conjunction will be in alignment with Capulus star in Perseus constellation. Perseus is a warrior in the sky, the prince. And tuning into the higher frequencies of this star, it is that divine masculine energy. It feels like divine masculine utopian energy, like the other side of the spectrum. So everything structured and ordered and working and functional and linear and focused. 
And so it's almost like we're we're having this galactic exchange or or balancing this, you know, opportunity on earth to find a a, a kind of balance within both of those polarities and and be supported by beings and star frequencies that have been through a similar experience and been on their own evolutionary path through polarity and found a sense of harmony ultimately. So yeah, Centaurus constellation is the centaur. It's also linked to Chiron. So it's a a priestly centaur in the sky. So we have this this deeply spiritual healer, teacher, mentor vibration coming through the star alignments as well that we are being certainly divinely guided by beings and star intelligence that contain the light codes. You know, we need to receive the messages, the frequencies, the cosmic rays, you know, the information, the insights that are going to help us integrate into this new paradigm of our functioning. So I'm super excited to connect more in with those frequencies. What I've been doing, I'm teaching a class on this transit, so I've been doing some of the work preparing for the class. And and as I feel into those galactic energies, it's they feel very, very supportive and you know, very ultimately helping us find a greater sense of balance and unity within ourselves. Well, that would be fabulous, <laughs> to say the least. I I really do believe humanity is ready for it individually and collectively, which is, in my own theory, that's what so much of the pushback is, where it's appearing at, well, it is actually very divisive right now. It's trying to get back to that place of balance. And I know you can't, you know, you don't know for sure, but would you think that maybe we will have more physical visitation in from the galactic realms? Or what, what do you think about that? Or how is that showing up for you? I think most definitely, because actually after the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, the next one of the next major transits that's happening is planet Jupiter will be changing sign into Gemini. And Gemini is all about communication and contact and messages. Jupiter linked to expanding our minds, expanding our horizons, and really receiving that higher knowledge. And when Jupiter is entering the sign of Gemini, it will be in a conjunct alignment with the stars of the Pleiades. And the Pleiades, of course, the star cluster within Taurus constellation is one of the most studied and revered of all the stars, you know, upon the earth. Earth cultures have always looked to the Pleiades, and for good reason, they are very much galactic communicators and contact and ambassadors between the earth and the stars. So I really think we are going to see more more people who are open to contact and receiving contact and different ideas about what contact can look like too, inviting in galactic contact that might not be as physical, but it could be more on that telepathic level and opening to doing that in a safe way. And what I'm finding is that Reiki offers that safe way there's a lot of people here, you know, ET contact. Oh, that's another thing. <laughs> Brace, tense everything. Oh, no. That's scary. I'm going to be abducted, you know. And with and Reiki. Experimented like, on. <laughs> what's that? And experimented on. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of healing around that, that that needs to happen. Greater awareness and healing of those the contact experiences that have already occurred. And then Reiki offers a very safe way for facilitating more of that contact and understanding that 
you know, what you're contacting that appears as other is actually you also. And so there's nothing to be afraid of as you're meeting yourself, more of your multidimensional self, you're meeting yourself in other forms, you know, reflecting different star qualities and energies and frequencies and and, and different cultural experiences. So this is a very um, a very divine timing of of receiving more of that that direct galactic contact, I think with Jupiter and Gemini beginning at the end of May and then for the next year. Uh, so what about how that maybe also, is revealed for people that are star seeds that maybe that's even part of it is that them as you said about getting to know self that because in our work as of course with reiki we meet you know incarnate star seeds and how there's so there's there's more opening to that understanding now um, which often can show up as neurodivergency, something along those lines, or just a kind of a different drive, you know, inner drive. And um, so would you say that may be more available for people to understand about themselves? I think there's going to be more interest in all of this, for sure following Jupiter Uranus conjunction, like wanting to connect to the galactic, wanting to connect to the multidimensional self, understanding, like the reason I got into really astrology and then galactic astrology was wanting to understand pure human nature. And in finding out pure human nature, well, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> What is that? I mean, you know, it this question continues to lead me into space, <laughs> into the stars in understanding that that question. So, yeah, understanding our multidimensional self and understanding the infinite manifestations of the star consciousness through, you know, the human consciousness and human perception in this vehicle and that of course different star consciousness reflecting their light through the the human vehicle or the human prism is going to result in neurodiversity and different qualities and needing different foods or needing different practices resonating with different kinds of medicine and herbs and you know different lifestyle choices and you know philosophies and ways of being really I think opening, we're going to continue to need to open more and more to that diversity moving forward, most certainly, and celebrate it because it's beautiful. It's an amazing level of consciousness that is so um, often underdeveloped because of the misunderstandings about it. and including for people themselves. So fascinating. So tell us about your classes and what is involved in those. Because when you, as soon as you said that, I, I heard people thinking, okay, how do I get there? <laughs> what is it? What are your classes about these transits? Yeah, so... I have, I've started teaching classes that combine the galactic astrology, the astrological knowledge and wisdom and teachings about the various transits and their interactions with the stars in depth and combining that part with a Reiki journey that's specific to whatever the transit is and whatever the star alignments are so we can begin to embody the planetary archetypes and embody more fully the star consciousness that's available receive the healing messages insights empowerments that are being provided and orchestrated by the planets and the stars for our growth on earth and these classes 
my intention with them has been so that they are accessible to people with no astrological knowledge, as well as, you know, people with astrological knowledge. There's something for everybody. And then the same with all levels of Reiki from, you know, beginner Reiki, no Reiki experience to, you know, people in my class will have advanced Reiki training and and still come and, and receive a benefit. And it's been so wonderful that I've had that intention. I'm like, I have no idea how I'm going to do that. <laughs> and the feedback has been that, that actually it's happening, that, you know, people who have no astrology knowledge are able to be in the space and receive more expansion of their astrological background and understand enough and then those who are more advanced in their study are also receiving information and then all levels of reiki also receiving so yeah the classes have been super fun and you know i'm i'm teaching one on jupiter uranus on april 20th and then another one for jupiter and gemini on may 25th so it's a way to begin connecting and embodying more of your multidimensional self. Um, and so it sounds like that's like it, it guides them on a personal exploration of how those transits, not training them necessarily in astrology, but how these influences affect them on a personal level. Well, they learn about the planetary archetype. So for example, in the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction class, they'll learn about Jupiter in your chart, Uranus in the chart, the meaning of those two coming together, more about their cycle, more about the zodiac sign of Taurus. So it's a different way of actually learning astrological basics based on what's really alive and happening in the cosmos and in the transits now. So it's... It's been, you know, how I've been following my guidance to teach astrology essentially in this way where it's these energies are very potent and wanting to be learned and experienced. Yeah. So, and then I do in the classes provide people with a personalized document where they can find the conjunction in their chart and then like what house it's in. So for somebody who has no idea how to find, you know, where something is happening in their chart, I will supply that for for them. Yeah. Well, so it can be so applied helpful. personally. Yeah, helpful because um, astrology is, you know, as, as you know, you know, it's a deep dive into studying it to become proficient. For the, all the years I've worked with it, I, I, I know a lot, but only enough. Like I would never try to read it for someone else because i'm not i'm not versed well enough it's takes a long time to be studied so i love that you brought it in at such a basic level that anyone can understand and in addition learn more about it and gain that knowledge like what are these energies and then also for the people that are going to click in because that's the other thing i wonder if that happened in your experience did the did the astrology just like instant? I know you had to learn it, but did you have an instant click in with it? Like, like almost like a an innate memory of it. You've done it before. Yeah. Yeah, it was super easy for me to pick up. And I had already had all my Reiki attunement. So I think when you learn anything new and you have like the Reiki mental emotional symbol and you have no sir. you have like these different energy like things are easier to learn and that was certainly the case for me i also have strong gemini placements and i see this a lot for people who want to learn astrology typically have often will have strong gemini placements and you know being good at learning and studying and collecting information and just kind of having this whole library of information within so reiki really helped wake up this this whole astrology thing for me and i i continue my studies moving forward because there's so much to learn and it's yeah it's so interesting 
how did you get uh, interested in the galactic astrology? How did that come about? Because that's that, pretty new, right? Yeah, that was Reiki too. Reiki was guiding me to study the asteroids and be journal journeying with the asteroids and to the asteroids that orbit in between Mars and Jupiter. And then there are others that are further out. And then I was actually guided to then look beyond the <laughs> asteroids. It was, it's been Reiki nudging me all along. And so I was really looking at the black holes. And then I found my astrology teacher, Julia Boaz, and she teaches more about the fixed stars and the galactic astrology and how our star alignments can show us more about our multidimensional self and you know past lives, future lives, parallel lives. And she brought through like a really amazing paradigm. And I was just guided to her as a teacher because she's doing this leading edge work. And then I've been guided also to take another class, a certification on fixed stars, working with them. You'll love this calling because you just went there, the, the ancient Egyptian way. So looking at heliacal stars and perians, there's a whole other way you can look at the star alignment. So I just keep looking to the star. And maybe it's the Leo in me, you know, being ruled by the sun. It's like... The sun is wonderful, but so are all the other stars. And yeah, I mean, it's it's the light. It's the light bringer. Reiki's just keeps guiding me to explore all these great lights we have within our our cosmos and and what that means for us and and our connection to it all. Yeah. So then, talk about your readings and what you do for those if and how people you know what what people need to do to schedule a reading with you all my my readings and my classes and then also where you can sign up for the distant reiki share that's all on my website taylornorrisreiki.com i have a free distant reiki share every new moon so the next one being for this airy solar eclipse april 8th and the readings are all on my website as well. I have a variety of astrology readings from just like a regular astrological consultation looking at the, the planets and, you know, your cycles and your transits and your natal chart. And then I have the looking at your star alignments and your astrology chart, the ancient Egyptian way. So that's a whole totally different way. And that is like, that has been so much fun to learn and do those readings because those are really like the stars very embodied, very like grounded in our lives and and like more accessible. It feels even more physicalized how the Egyptians work with the stars. And it's probably much older than the Egyptians. We just know and can date that this method dates back to them. Then there's the galactic astrology readings, which feels like the higher octave of the stars, and it feels more of that very multidimensional self and like reaching out to those parts of ourselves. And I combine the galactic astrology soul readings with Reiki. And so I have all different combinations of what I do, like just Reiki, just astrology, and then different offerings that kind of combine the galactic received intuitively in a Reiki session, like receiving the galactic information just through a Reiki journey. And then I have uh, astrology readings that, you know, combine the astrology with receiving the galactic information through a Reiki journey. Because that's been what's so cool, too, is in the Reiki journey, having this backlog of all the star information, the astrology, often the information I'll receive in a Reiki journey is like in that kind of language and in that kind of framework. So that's that's kind of interesting, too, of all the different ways to to read <laughs> and learn. And then you have I want to I want to kind of put into quotation marks because people may really want to specifically join you on April 8th. You have that your distance. Talk about that, your distance Reiki share. 
The Stunt Reiki share every single new moon, including the solar eclipse, April 8th. And in that, I usually will talk about astrology for the first part of it and about what's coming up next. And then there will be a channeled Reiki journey that's specific to the solar eclipse and like the galactic energies involved in the solar eclipse. And then there's a Reiki share at the end where we all come together and share Reiki and empower our intentions moving forward. It's in the journey, typically, I will guide some you know, optional automatic writing where you can set some intentions for the moon cycle ahead or in the course of in the case of this solar eclipse, like for the next six months, like what kinds of seeds of intentions you may be planting. So there's some guided journaling typically available within those journeys. And yeah, Reiki Sharon, it's it's been so fun. It's a, a growing circle. Like every time, you know, the soul family just grows wider and many from the Reiki lifestyle community will come. And I just, I love it so much. It makes me so happy. So I hope that those who aren't out viewing the eclipse will come to the Reiki Share if you want to be there. Well, I think, I think that um, they could be at the Reiki share because even the East Coast, I think the eclipse is after your Reiki share. So I think it's like three in the afternoon or something. Yeah, well, I, it's at 8 a.m. my time. And, and yeah. I know it will be, the eclipse will be happening during the share. Oh, it'd be during <laughs> that. Oh. Yeah. Them like very different time zones from the east coast. Okay, yeah, so yeah it'll be your six, time. Yeah, six. Mm -hmm. I'm mean, it's six hours ahead, so it'd be like mm -hmm. three p.m. there or two p.m. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what we're six hours ahead, not five. Yeah. Wow. Well, it has flown by. <laughs> it's been I like know. an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we'll just say Taylor's, uh, website again is taylornorrisreiki.com. And again, definitely join her on Instagram, which is Taylor Norris Reiki and then YouTube. Um, it, I don't think, I don't know if you have a, uh, dedicated domain. So just search her on YouTube or go to her Instagram and it's all linked there and you can sign up for all of the things that, she's doing and the new moon circles and then her classes and get a reading or a session from her um, on her website. So yeah, Taylor, thank you so much. We always love having you and we see you all the time. So we always love talking to Taylor. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much. This has been so fun. Yeah. You just add a beautiful perspective to it all and combining the two also is you know, it's helpful on a personal level, but then it's also helpful for people to see, you know, the possibilities of what can be done with these modalities, right? That how you can combine these things and whether it's astrology, which it's super helpful to see how you can combine them, but also other modalities and see how they just integrate together and, and work beautifully together is um, also inspiring. So um, yeah, we just always love having you as a guest and thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. And one more thing, you also uh, do personal Reiki sessions too, right? And they're online. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I want to make sure that we say that for any of you out there listening, you know, looking for reiki session also yeah trained by you too so i do the journeys and the channeling and all the fun stuff you know it. love it so much <laughs> well and we can be found at reiki lifestyle.com we do have classes in april so take a look at our calendar and our uh schedule of classes uh reiki classes and animal reiki classes um and happy eclipse, everybody, and also Jupiter Uranus conjunction and all of the other things that Taylor talked about that are coming up. Um, lots of love and definitely join her for some support, us for some support and just bring in Reiki. 
All right. Bye now. Thank you. Bye. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you.